Today we are with Christine Chai from Zested Foods and she is going to teach us how to make twice baked potatoes. We're also going to tell you everything awesome you didn't know about the potato. Let's get started. Okay, so what are we doing here? We are going to learn how to do a baked potato, then we're going to turn it into twice baked potato, or in other words, a loaded baked potato. Okay, so the first thing we did is we washed our potatoes. We just have a basic russet potato. Just wash them to get off all the dirt. Take a little bit of oil and just put them over the potatoes. Now, the oil is going to help give it a nice crust. So that's why we're putting it on and so that they don't stick to the pan. Now we're gonna add just a little bit of kosher salt on top of our potato. It's just gonna add extra flavor to the potato. If you so choose to eat the outside of the potato with your twice baked, then you have the salt and the flavor. Then we'll take our fork and we're gonna actually pierce. I like to do it about three times into the potato. That's just to let it steam vent out, right? Yeah, exactly. Because if, if you don't prick the potato, it can explode which would be bad. That'd yeah. be unfortunate. And I, I have my oven set to 350 degrees, and we're gonna pop these into the oven for about an hour. Okay. All right. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we've got the baked potatoes, and we're gonna turn them into something even more awesome, twice baked potatoes. Right. So how are we gonna do that? So at this point, the potato is fully cooked, okay. so you can eat it perfectly like this. But what we're gonna do is twice bake it. So we baked it once, we're gonna scoop everything out, fill it with lots of love, and then we'll bake it again. I Hence the name, Twice Baked. <laughs> I, I like that you refer to all the, the bacon and the cheese as lots of love. Lots That's of awesome. Love. Oh, yes. So the potato okay. itself doesn't have a lot of flavor. Um, they're pretty bland. Yeah. So we've added salt to them to give them that flavor. Yes. But then we're also adding some extra stuff to add flavor. <laughs> so what we're gonna have Joseph do is he's gonna take the knife and just make a slit right down the center okay. of each of the potatoes. So a slit about half deep or, um, or how far down? And, and potatoes kind of have like an a oval shape from the side and we wanna have two deep ones instead of two shallow ones. Right, okay. all you're doing, don't cut it all the way through, just go across the top. Oh, okay. So you're just opening him, like open heart surgery. Okay. Don't cut the person all beep, the way through. Beep, beep. <laughs> right there, stop. Okay, okay. Now what you're gonna do is just kind of squeeze this. Toothpaste. Kind of just open him up a little bit. Okay. And just kind of open him up. Okay. And, and we're that gonna stops just... it from splitting like a hot dog bun and instead right. it kind of like becomes this bowl almost. So okay. you can do it that way. And another way I can quickly show you, because if this gets too cut far down like this, it'll just split open. Uh -huh. So another thing that you can do is I take the potato, turn it on its side. This is actually the preferred method that I like to do. And then just slice oh. off the top. Just slice off a little bit. And then you've got an opening here to scoop it out. So, like so you a, can do either or, it just depends on how you want it to look on This is on like a soup in a bread bowl. So I'll, sorry it's kind of greasy, but I'll let no, you choose let me, however let you want to do it. Let me try that. And then we'll have Joseph, Joseph scoop it out for us. Okay, and what is our scooping now with, methodology? Now with the potato, you want to leave, if you just go scraping out all of the inside, he's going to have no structure. Okay. So you want to kind of leave like a quarter of an inch okay. around the potato. Okay. So sometimes what I like to do is you can take your knife and you can kind of go around. Uh, okay. And so it kind of gives uh, you that. Oh. So you've defined where you're going to remove from. And I'm just going to scoop this out onto right. the... Oh, it's, like, here. Oh, okay. it's like you're making a dugout canoe. Yeah, so that kind of gives you an idea. And that That's way you don't canoe. scrape too much out of it. <laughs> How many can potatoes And the same thing on the bottom. Don't scoop it all the way at the bottom. Okay. We don't see that hole. Well, that's, that's risky. Perfect. Okay. Now go ahead and take the masher. Okay. We're going to mash it up, Ooh, just like you're this? making mashed honest? potatoes. And then, Joseph, go ahead and just take maybe like that's a couple the, tablespoons of butter. Not that much. Sure. This is the great thing about taters, is you can boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. <laughs> Although... Isn't that a song or something? No, that's a, that's a line in The Lord of the Rings. So oh. there's, a, there's that moment where Samwise Gamgee is trying to cook the rabbits and he's sitting there just wishing he had potatoes. And what? he's like... Turtles, precious. You what? don't... Turtles. Potatoes, you know, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. But the funny thing about that particular scene, and this is where I'm going to geek out about the Colombian exchange for just a second, is because they don't belong in that movie. 
the, the thing is, I mean, the Lord of the Rings is set, supposed to be like a prehistory of England. It's supposed to be like this medieval kind of, of Europe dark well, age Europe uh, story. But there were no potatoes at all in Europe before like the 1600s. They only existed in Peru. That's where they're originally from. They're from the New World. And then the only way to get them over is after Columbus. Although, if you're really up on your Tolkien lore, you'll know that the Numenorians traded with Valinor, the land across the ocean. To the west. So, it's very possible that Valinor is the new world and that actually potatoes and tomatoes do belong in Lord of the Rings. In which case, they just went extinct before the movie started. <laughs> but, but the funny thing to me about uh, that, that whole story is, one, if you ever see a medieval movie and it's got potatoes, tomatoes, or uh, you know any of these new world crops, pumpkins, it's a dead giveaway that they haven't done quite all the research that they should of because they don't belong. The fact that they put them in there anyway tells you something about how, how they've become part of the culture. It's particularly interesting because although Peru is still the land of the potato and they have by far the largest number of potatoes, excuse me, the largest variety of potatoes, and uh, you know, it's the source of the potato, the Andes region, Bolivia and Peru, um, Europe is actually, Eastern and Central Europe per capita now produces more potatoes than anywhere else in the world. And in broad numbers, China, India, and other places in Southeast Asia are producing more potatoes than anywhere else in the world. So it's actually really cool to look at that and to see how this crop, grown in the Americas, right, that didn't even make it to Europe until the 1500s, the, everyone in Europe and Southeast Asia has said, hey, we like this thing. This is better than what we've got going on before that. Go ahead and add a little bit of butter and then that's... A little bit more? Yeah, just because I uh, like butter. I like butter too. Butter I like is butter good. too. <laughs> You know, this Looks is like we have a vote of three. We're okay. All More no butter. question. You know, and then that's good enough. Mixing the butter into the potatoes is a funny thing because I mean, this is something that wouldn't have existed in the New World because they didn't have cows or dairy or any of that stuff. And so, I mean, we have like a, cult a cultural fusion project going on in this glass bowl. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's a cultural fusion that's been going on for so long that we never think of it as a cultural fusion, like because this potatoes is all need we butter. Know. It's all I grew up with. Yeah. So to me, it's like... Potatoes are normal. It's natural. Why wouldn't you have a potato and butter and sour cream and cheese and bacon and But for most of European of Asian history, it was not normal at all. It was non-existent. Right. So basically now we've, we have mashed potatoes. So you could make mashed potatoes this way and not peel the potatoes, I guess, if you didn't want to. But what we're going to do now is add in... Um, some moisture, which is we're going to do sour cream. Okay. So how Not much of this are we adding? Are we? <laughs> Just a little. Add as much as you want. Okay. That's the nice thing about cooking is you can add as much or as little to your taste. There we go. That'll be good. And we'll stir it up and taste test it before we stick it back in the potatoes and you can add more or less Perfect. as needed. I forgot to get this salt and pepper. This is interesting. I don't think I've ever done this before, so I'm actually, oh, really? I'm pretty excited about this. Oh, good. You know, like I've done the baked potato thing, sure. but I've never like carved them out, tried to make a separate mix and then load sure. them. I so think I'm super they, excited. A baked potato can sometimes be dry. Mm -hmm. My husband's not a huge fan of baked potatoes because they're dry, mm -hmm. which the potato itself is dry. But when you, I feel like when you make it in the twice baked, it adds an extra moisture because you're uh, adding it all together and then melting it together. So I think they're more moist. Oh, cool. That's good. Smooth, creamy. Yes. So go ahead and add in as much cheese as you'd like. Okay, cheese I like. We like the cheese. I'm thinking that could handle a little bit more cheese. What are you I, I'm of okay. the same mind. Then we can add in bacon and we have green onions and we'll save the chives for on top. Okay. Yep. Um, see how they're kind of dry? See how yes. they're not like... So you can either at this point add in more sour cream, you can add more butter, or you can add in milk. So which which choice would you like? Which dairy product shall we add Yeah, that's why I'm like, which one? And Let's if we end up one. using the whole cube, wonderful. That's a choice. <laughs> yep. Now we'll add salt and pepper too. Okay. All okay. right, we've got your lovely kosher salt me bobber here. Isn't that the best? Yeah, it is really cool. Every home should have one of these. And use kosher salt when cooking. The flaky texture, and I, I find that the flavor is actually different. It's more intense, but not overly salty, if that makes sense. After having tried it, yes, yes yeah. it does. I mean, it can get over salty if you put too much salt. 
So be careful. I'm curious about the little container. Is there like a rationale behind that or is it just like a cool little container? Well, someone gave it to me as a gift, okay. but it, I like it because it's just convenient and it just holds the salt and easy access. Yeah. And a pinch of salt a is no longer a, an expression. Right, it's reality now. I did too. You know the difference between theory and practice? In theory, there is none. In practice, there is. It's true. So true. Okay. How do? How much pepper do we like? I like. I like a moderate. Yes. Yeah. Are no. That, that's pepper? that's not moderate. That's that's. I tiny. was like that was like a little bit. That's the question. Is is that moderate? More. It's all on. The nice thing is well, you can taste it, and then we can go from there. Let's go ahead and add in some green onions. Okay. So the, the green onions go inside and then the chives are above. And then we'll put the chives on top. And I've done it both ways where you tatum, put the green tatum, onions tatum. in or just on top. But I find that the, with the chives, they're smaller, so they stay on top a little bit oh, better. That's smart. But mm. then you get the green onion flavor on the inside. That's good. Okay, once you get that all mixed up, you can go ahead and take your spoon here okay. and taste it. I was going to say, it's looking pretty good. I'd eat this by itself. And you absolutely can. It's basically just loaded mashed potatoes at this yeah. point. But when you, like I said, when you melt it all together, okay. yes. it just makes it so. creamier and tastes better. How is it? So we just did the taste test and we decided it was a little bit dry. Let's go for it. Very flavorful, but a little dry, so let's. Boom. If you're on a low fat diet, <laughs> find another option. <laughs> Gonna say the potatoes are low calorie by themselves, plus sour cream, plus cheese, plus bacon. Not so much. Mm, not not so, so much. much. Okay, once that's all mixed together, go ahead and taste it again. And if it's okay. if it's where you want it, then we'll fill our potatoes. I was gonna say it's starting to have. It looks like it has that texture now that's a little creamier and a little more. Yes. Yeah. But okay. you can still make them dry. They'll still taste great because of the bacon and the cheese. Mm -hmm. But I like them to be a little bit more full, more full. Yeah, more rich, more, more a little smooth, more more moist. I know people hate that word. Sorry, but it is Just what it is, right? <laughs> okay, are we ready to? Yes. Okay. Go? So now so go ahead, and what you're going to do is just oh yeah, taste oh, it. Yes. Better. Does, gotcha. How about how's the okay. salt? That is fantastic. Um, because sometimes with I bacon, think we could stand it adds. To put in a little more salt, actually. Yeah, because sometimes okay. you have. To, that's why I always have you taste test because if you put too much, you can't take it out. That's smart. But you can always add more. That is so smart. Plus, bacon There's... is salty, so when you add that, you don't want to think, "Oh, I need more salt." Yeah. Yeah, that is good. So taste. adding the salt in last. If you want to taste okay. it again. Here we go. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Let me mix first. Let me mix first. My grandpa had a saying: "That last bite left a funny taste in my mouth." And then you take another bite. Oh. <laughs> so. I need to try that again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, no, maybe so. In a minute, I don't know. That's good. Okay. Okay, he approves. Now we load. So yes? Approved. Yes. Okay. So this right. gets just fill them up. shoved in there. Okay. Now this one we decided to just, this is the one that we split and it decided to split. So we just cut it in half to make two. The potatoes are big enough that you can. So that is another option too. If you want to have a dinner party, you can buy bigger potatoes and then cut them in half after they're cooked like this and you can have two. Or if you're feeding lots of hungry men, you can do one big potato. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we got and you this. just make them overflow a little bit, right? You can, absolutely. Or, or what, it, well, is there a... I like to because I think it makes it look pretty when they're coming out and oozing and bubbling. It's a sign of plenty. Yes. Sign of bounty. But the downside of that, too, is sometimes when we add cheese on top and the chives, um, they kind of fall off. So it's kind of a hit and miss. Volcano to catch the careful. cheese or mound to show the plenty and awesomeness. Right. You guys are doing an awesome job. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking this is probably gonna be pretty good. And then we put a little more cheese on top. Yep. Is that how this goes? And then sometimes when there's extra right here, I just to like, I just like to eat it out of the bowl. <laughs> ah. Or you can come back through like this one because this is such a big potato. Yep. You can come back in and mound it a little bit more. And same with this one. Nom 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 nom. And like Can I we said, get a little you don't bit of that to. and spread it out over the other. Well, no, it's probably good. Let's just let's just let it be. Perfect. Okay. You guys are going to be experts. I hope Ten so. thousand I'm, hours I'm later. I'm excited. I'm excited. These are looking really. You good. You can take these to your next 
family gathering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, and the nice thing, speaking of that, the nice thing about these is if you have a, a big good? dinner that you're preparing and planning, <laughs> you can actually make these in advance because the potatoes already cooked, so they're not going to turn brown. Smart. And so you can make these the day before, just cover them. So at this point, I could just put some saran wrap or aluminum foil over these, put them in the fridge, and then tomorrow, pull them out, put them in the oven. Smart. So you get them to this point where they haven't been baked the second time and then just right. bake them. Right. So it saves you an hour of cooking, preparing, and everything so that you can do more the day of your dinner. There you go. Smart. Yeah. Smart, so. smart. And then if you want, you can either throw on green onions on top, or sometimes okay. I just take a little bit of chives and just say, sprinkle like, it on like the, the top. I like the chives approach, so. Yeah. Awesome. Now, the potato, like I said, is already cooked. So all we're doing now is just putting them back in the oven for, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, just kind of watching them to make sure the cheese is melted and the inside gets nice and Kind of mixed. Through, You're kind warm. of getting all the flavors into the fats and letting them kind of soak through. Exactly. Nice. Okie dokie. See? All right. It's pretty. And there they are. And there they are. Wow. Now, one thing I failed to mention for the next time you make them, this one kind of tipped over a little bit. So what you can do is actually take the potato and then slice off a little bit on the bottom so you have more of a flat surface and then it won't tip. And that's so something that was my we fault. actually did on, let me not burn myself. That would be good, right there. So that one's been sliced. Yeah, if you slice it a little bit like this, then it won't tip over. Okie dokie. Or if they're big enough, sometimes they won't. But this one was more of the top, because this one was cut in half, so right. the, the top one was more round. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, so, get it? Eh, eh, eh? <laughs> I think I'm funny. Now with these loaded baked potatoes, you can serve them up with chicken, pork, steak, they pretty much go with any meal. And that is one of the beauties of potatoes in general is they just go everywhere. Yep. Yes. I'm really excited about this. I'm excited to try what you guys have created. Uh, if you haven't checked it out already, we did a video previously with Christine about tacos and they were amazing. And so I'm really excited now. <laughs> As am I. Okay. Right, do we think they've cooled enough? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't see any steam. But you guys created see. these, so they're going to be... Come on, you apes. Nobody wants to live forever. Amazing. Nobody lives forever. Nobody wants to live forever, I think. It's do you want to. Do you want to live forever? I think there would be pros and cons to living forever. Yeah. It's going to be hot. Actually, the temperature's pretty good. Is it okay? Yeah. The top is just really hot. Mm. I love bacon. Okay. That was mostly just baked potato. Now I'm going to get That was some sour cream. That, that mix. Mm. Mmm. Tastes so much different than just eating mashed potatoes, right? That's so glorious. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so glorious. Mmm. Mm. And some people don't like to eat the skin, and they'll just eat the inside, and that's totally fine. But because we put salt and made it a little uh, crunchy on the outside, and gave it that crust, mm. you can eat the outside too, and it just adds extra love. I don't know if this is true or not, but I've, I've heard stories about um, in times of famine, actually this was, uh, this was the Mormon pioneers as they were going across, that they, uh, the, the men would eat only the potato skins and give the potatoes to the, to the women and children, but they ended up be, the men were the ones that ended up being the healthiest and having the most strength because it turns out that's where all the nutrition is. So. so if you could work yourself around to eating potato skins, it's a real good choice. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, another fun thing I found out while I was researching the potato was that, uh, you know, uh, when, when it came over to Europe, the Spaniards were using it to feed their army as they moved across Europe. And um, peasants along the way would pick up the crop and start planting it because one of the cool things about it is that when you plant a potato, um, it's underground and then the plant comes up. And then after the tuber grows underground, the plant on top dies. And so there's no trace on the surface that there's a potato. And so you have this massive food storage just sitting six inches below the surface, but it's totally invisible from above. So rampaging armies would come through and steal grain stores, but they would not steal the potatoes because where's the potato? Yeah. There's nothing there. Store it in the ground. The funny thing about um, old armies is they didn't carry supply wagons with them. Their idea was that they would pick up their supplies and feed themselves by basically raiding on the way. And so if you happen to be the poor farmer in the way, then you got raided. And if your food is above ground and stored nicely in bags, then 
it's easy for soldiers, but if the soldiers like have to dig for it, then they don't. So Especially well, because where would you even begin to dig? Yeah, unless you saw it's just a nice big empty field. Right. And how long can potatoes stay under the ground? Do you know? You can oh. eat them that way all winter long. That's actually yeah. one of the fun things is you don't have to harvest them right away. Right. As long as you careful, mulch. Though, if you do get a hard, if you get a hard freeze, then it will start ruining the texture of the potato. It will destroy the potato. So if you're going to get a hard freeze underground, you need to either mulch it so that it doesn't freeze or you need to dig it out of the ground. And by mulching about four inches deep on the top or, or a little uh, bit more. But as you, long as you can, as long as yeah. you can keep the level of the soil that has the potatoes, as long as you can keep that portion of the soil from freezing, I, I mean, it's the same thing as if you, you know, put it in your basement. Better, in fact. Yes, and speaking of that, potatoes are best stored in cold, dark places. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't have root cellars anymore. So if you want to store them in your basement, that's typically a good place where it's colder and out of the sunlight. So mm -hmm. not right on your counter. In the back of the garage, somewhere away from the yeah. motor oil. No, no moisture. Don't keep them in your fridge because of the moisture. Mm -hmm. And also the, the cold temperatures convert some of the starch into sugar. Yes. And so yes. if you want to try a sweetened normal potato, then maybe that would be an experiment to try in a fridge. But, uh, but don't store them there long term. No, no, they won't taste like potatoes. No. Um, you know, we've talked a little about a bit about the nutritional value of the potato on the other video that we did um, with Christine. And I was just thinking that another big thing that makes the potato valuable is how well it stores. Um, my parents grow potatoes and they, they don't grow commercially. They just grow a few rows every year. And they still have bags of potatoes in their basement um, in a nice cold area that are, you know, you can still pull them out and eat them. And, they'll, and it's mid-February now. So you can go ahead, you can store those and eat them all the way up until you plant your first spring garden. The next crop. Yeah. That's actually like something. Food storage. Yeah. Without having to do the. No like canning, the no refrigerators. Processing of it. Yep. You and just so, bag it and put it in the basement. Funny thing about um, crops is that that's one of the selection biases that they're chosen for. A good crop is something not like zucchini, which you have to eat during the summer, but something that will just be, be available in the middle of the winter. And so. You know, that's one of the advantages, historically speaking, for this crop. I mean, it, it's good nutrition, it's, it's massive amounts of calories in a small space, it's easy to grow, it's easy to reproduce, and then, you know, it'll, it'll feed you right through the middle of winter because of the way that it stores. Now, the potato itself, if I know my gardening correctly, you can cut off the potato, mm -hmm. take this actual potato, and it's its own seed. Mm -hmm. You can cut off, isn't it where the eye is or something? That's where it will sprout out the next, is that right? Yep, if now, you get pieces I'll, about the size of a golf ball. Yeah. Um, I'll give a tip for that, because my family plants potatoes every year, is if you do want to do that, you can just buy potatoes, and then you want to cut up the potato in such a way that there's at least a couple of eyes on every section of potato, and then you go and plant those a few inches below the surface, and I think about a foot apart in a row. But you do have potato seeds too. You can you also plant or is it seed. better to plant from the actual? Well, it's a lot potato. easier. I mean, you can just go buy a bag of potatoes, and there you go. Sure. Right? The thing um, about the seeds is that seeds have uh, very genetics, and so when you plant the seed, you don't know exactly what kind of potato you're going to get. Sure. But if you slice it off from this potato, it actually produces an exact clone, a genetic clone. So I mean, you have eaten the same potato probably more than once. These the are same, probably the all the same, same potato. Material, the same organism. That is so fascinating. Yep, Dolly the potato. So fascinating. Isn't that crazy? Funny thing about that, though, is that in Peru, there are dozens and dozens of varieties of potatoes. This is the genetic origin. This is where they were kind of invented or first bred. And so that's where you have the most varieties. And you know, they totally change Europe when they arrive and become a staple in Ireland um, to the point where a famine of potatoes is enough to kill a massive no a number of the population, have the worst famine in Irish history. But uh, not all the potatoes came across. So we're going like three different types when there are dozens more in Peru. You've probably tried things that I, I've never heard of. Yeah, um, you know, well, so at least around here, when you go to the grocery store, you'll find Rexits, you'll find Yukon Gold, you'll find Red Pontiac, and then maybe you'll find uh, Purple Fingerlings, or excuse me, you'll, you'll find Purple Potatoes or Fingerlings if you can, um, you know, depending on what your grocery store has. Um, but if you go to certain places, and Peru is one of them, then you'll just find a ton of different potatoes, and some are more starchy than others, some are wet, some are dry, um, some are good for boiling, some are good for baking, some are good for frying, um, and there's just, there's just an insane, insane, insane variety. Um, Wikipedia says that there's a thousand different varieties of potato, and the number that, the number that I always heard throwing, thrown around while I was living in Peru was 10,000 varieties of potatoes. In either case, you know, like, you go and eat three varieties of potatoes, there are 
there's a huge number. There's just a ton of different. See, and when I hear that, that just blows my mind that there's even a thousand, yeah. even fifteen. Yep. You know, it's because I. Is still because 15 has a lot of variety. 15 would be a lot. That'd be enough in a grocery store to have, you know, you like try it's one a week whole for a whole row of potatoes. Oh, yeah. But yeah. the thought of 1,000 or 10,000, it'd be so fun to be on that taste test panel and just try each Gosh, potato. Gosh, you'd be there for years. Well, yeah, but I can't even imagine what the flavor would be. Yeah. 10,000 yeah. potatoes, because I know what the difference is between a russet and a red and a Yukon, even a fingerling. Yeah. But that's just four or five. I can't even imagine processing 10,000 That would be different flavors of the same vegetable. Yeah, and then adding to that or multiplying with that complexity is the number of different ways that you can work with the potato. I mean, right. boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. You've got these twice baked. You've got the baked potatoes that we showed. You've got uh, mashed potatoes. You've got uh, hash browns. You've got French fries, all these varieties. And so if you were to multiply that out by 10,000 varieties of potatoes, you could be eating potatoes for the rest of your life and never taste the same thing twice. <laughs> well, and you think about all the potato chips yeah. that we make that have different flavors that we add to the potato chips. I guess you could think of it as the same way as each potato chip has a different That's texture so cool. and flavor. And so you, you get the basics, something yeah. as basic and simple as a potato, which is like a meme, you know, the potato. And then you have the, uh, an infinite layer of variety, and it's not just variety for the sake of variety, it's good variety, where, I mean, you I'd actually want to eat hash browns or, and french fries you and want these. To eat different kinds of potatoes. And this, by the way, is delicious. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much. And for you ate the us whole thing, it. I'm impressed. Oh, of course. See, I usually don't eat the skin. Th th so. Those two are in danger. <laughs> <laughs> A big thank you to Christine of the Zested Foods YouTube channel for teaching us how to make these awesome, awesome You're twice welcome. baked potatoes. Thank you so much, they were delicious. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. We encourage you to check out her YouTube channel where she does a bunch of cooking tutorials. And you can see a video that we did with her there where we taught her how to make uh, salt potatoes, which is a super simple, good, and basic recipe, which kind of get just, it's all about glorifying the simpleness of the potato. So if you want to check that out, we're going to leave a link here and a card right here, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching our video. Here's your potato.